Okay, let's take a look at this variance analysis for multiple products, problem 14-34. Debbie's Delight Incorporated operates a chain of cookie stores budgeted in actual operating data of its three Chicago stores for August of 2006 appear as follows. Okay, and then you see on the screen that um, uh, Debbie's Delight has put a great deal of, of information into this and they've identified five different variety of cookies. Uh, they've indicated what the selling price per pound of the cookies were at the budgeted amounts, right? And I'm reading from these just to the left of my mouse here. They came up with a variable cost per pound that they budgeted and they focus on contribution margin, right? So take the selling price less the variable cost. We come up with contribution margin and then they also provided the volumes that they anticipated um, uh, baking and selling uh, for 2006. And then we compare that to the actual results. And this is very typical of what many companies would do. All right, so then we would compare everything we budgeted to what actually occurred for the month of August. And what we're asked to do on this problem is compute the total sales volume variance for August 2006, compute the sales mix variance, the sales quantity variance, and then comment on the results. All right, now, there's a whole lot of math involved here. Not that it's hard, uh, but with sales mix analysis, we're dealing with the percentages of the totals. And rather than have this, um, this multimedia presentation take a long time, what I thought I would do is illustrate the solution rather than actually working it in Excel for you. All right, so let's come take a look at the second page and we'll jump back to the data and see what we can come up with. All right, let's slide up to the top here and we'll say we'll present the data in the columnar uh, presentation, which is actually the way I, I like doing the analysis. I think it explains it very logically. All right, so to come up with the various sales mix, sales quantity, and sales volume variances, we create three columns. To the left of my mouse, the first column is what we would call the flexible budget. We would take the actual pounds of the cookies sold times the actual sales mix times the budgeted contribution margin per pound. Okay, so if we talk about chocolate chips, which is in panel A, what we see is we had 120,000. All right, where does the 120,000 come from? The left of my mouse, it was the total sales value in pounds. All right, we'll take that back. Times 48%. Now, to come up with the 48%, let me show you how that is. Right to the left of my mouse. For chocolate chip cookies, we would take 57.6 divided by 120,000. Well, where did the 57,600 come from? That 57,600 were the actual cookies that were sold in pounds. And by the way, the 120,000 was the actual cookies as well. All right, so on the left side, we're dealing with actual as much as possible. So we have now the 120,000 times 48%, and the 48% was that percentage of cookies that were sold during the period that were chocolate chip, which is this particular category we're looking at. All right, so we take the 120,000 times the 48% times the budgeted contribution margin per pound, and that was $2. Let's go make sure we follow where the $2 comes from. Right here, 450 less 250 is $2. So right to the left of my mouse is where that $2 comes from. So when we multiply that out, we come up with a flexi flexible budget amount of $115,200. Then we're going to compare that to the actual pounds of all cookies sold. Okay, so what makes this one different is now we take the same all cookies sold times the budgeted sales mix. Now what's different is we use the actual sales mix here, 48%. Now it's 45% times the budgeted sales mix times the budgeted contribution margin. So how do we come up with that 45%? Let's slide down and see if we can find that. Uh, right here, budgeted sales mix, 
45,000 divided by 100,000. All right, well, where did the 45 come from? We anticipated selling 100,000. When I say anticipating, I mean that was what we budgeted. And we budgeted 45,000 for chocolate chips. Okay, just to the left of my mouse. All right, now I'm going to go back to the analysis. That's where the 45,000, just to the left of my mouse, is divided by 100,000 budgeted units. Slide back up, and that's the 45 percent right below, sort of directly below my mouse now. And we multiply that times the budgeted contribution for 90,000. 90, oh, I moved over here. That same budgeted contribution margin appears in both columns 2 and 3. This is where we're talking about actual pounds times budgeted sales mix times budgeted contribution margin. And we, when we get to the static budget, we use the all budget amounts. Budgeted pounds, budgeted sales mix, budgeted contribution margin. So you see, in every case, we're just changing one variable. Here we change from 48% of the actual mix versus the budgeted mix, and then we compare the actual quantity to the budgeted quantity. And when we break this analysis, we come up with a two-part analysis. We can figure out how much of what what we um, budgeted for sales is due to what we would call a sales mix variance and in this case it's seven thousand two hundred dollars favorable and the reason is we actually sold more chocolate chips uh, is a percentage of the total than what we had budgeted and that's considered a sales mix variance then when we get to the sales quantity variance we use the budgeted mix times the difference in quantities times the contribution margin, right? So the only difference is the 120 versus the 100,000. We come up with 18,000 favorable. When we add the two mixes together, we come up with 25,200. Or another way of, of describing that is we compare the actual pounds of cookies times the actual sales mix times the budgeted contribution, though, versus the budgeted pounds of cookies sold times the budgeted sales mix. Okay? Um, and again, times the budgeted contribution margin. All right. Then, under oatmeal, raisin, and coconut, we're doing the exact same approach, and we'll do that for the other variety of cookies as well. The only difference is we're then using a different particular percentage of the total. Like in this case it's 15 percent. So if I slow da slide down we see that we had 18,000 budgeted or 18,000 actual cookies sold. And I think we'll find that right there. Yeah, to the left of my mouse is 18,000. Then we have the 25,000 budgeted cookies. And when we go back over here we'll see that that 25,000 is being used right to the left of my mouse as we do the analysis for oatmeal raisin. Okay, we do the same approach for coconut. Now you can stop the, the presentation if you want to review any of this, but there's really no reason for me to repeat it. It's exactly the same whether we're doing it for chocolate chip, oatmeal, coconut. I'll keep on sliding down. Or whether we're doing white chocolate, macadamia nut. Then we finally get to how do we compute it for all the cookies. Well, we simply sum the various variances from a top. Right, so that's 6,120 is the total sales mix variance. And if you wanted to know how we came up with that, we would just sum from the various pieces um, uh, as we move down. Um, and we can then come up with 47,000 of the total sales quantity. And again, we're summing the various quantities from up top. Now, if you wanted to solve this directly, rather than doing the pieces and just get to the just get to the all cookies analysis and skip the various pieces, look at note one here. We we would need to add in the the um, the the actual pounds of cookies sold. So one fifteen forty one twenty four thirty nine six sixty six equals two hundred and eighty eight thousand. Uh, that's actually dollars of of cookies sold. Um, and that's another way to get to that analysis. In the other cases, so in other words, we're summing the various analysis pieces that we did here. So my point is, 
in, you have to do the detail to derive the total cookies. You can either sum the variances from above to come up with the sales mix, or you can sum the components. So we would add in, if you will, I'm going to slide up here, the 115,200, the 41,400, the 24,960, and so on. And you saw that um, down here. Here's the various answers we were talking about. And you could do the same thing. Uh, to the left of my mouse is the middle points, and then to the left of my mouse here is um, uh, the uh, the other points that would show up as the under footnote n to, to derive the $235,000. Once we have those three numbers, we could compute the variances. Alternatively, just add the various variances. You'll derive the same answer. Okay, that's uh, the first part of this problem, where we've computed the total sales volume, the total sales mix, and the total quantity variance for August of 2006. Next, we'll comment on the results. All right, to comment on the results, I want to slide up a little bit and then provide a summary of what we found. And let me just bring this over rather than doing all the typing in front of your eyes. Okay, so we're able to come up with, in terms of the total sales volume variance, we wound up with $53,120 favorable. When I slide back over here, that's that number right there, 53120 And it's the sum of these vari various sales volume variances we did by cookies. Okay, so we could do quite a bit of analysis to say, well, why were we favorable? Well, we were favorable to the tune of 25200 for chocolate chip and unfavorable to the tune of 16100 for oatmeal raisin in terms of sales volume variance. And then we can split all of those various details. Oh, and by the way, you could go on and discuss it for coconut, white chocolate, and macadamia as well. And we can break out how much is due to a sales mix variance and how much is due to a sales quantity variance. So we're really getting into quite a bit of analysis of uh, uh, in terms of margin of what resulted versus budget versus actual. And we break it up into the components that are the sales mix and the components that re represent the sales quantity variance. Sum them together, we come up with the, the sales volume variance. Okay, so what can we comment about this? What we see is a favorable sales quantity variance because it sold more cookies in total than was budgeted. Now, together with the higher quantities, they also sold more of the high contribution margin white chocolate and macadamia nuts cookies relative to the budget mix. So as a result, they wound up with a total favorable sales mix variance. And that's this problem, everyone. So I'll slide back up to the top, and I'll say thank you for watching.